That is the nature of God to do what? Do it. I'm thinking this opportunity to welcome each one of you that is watching us live this morning. This is Christ Worship Center International Church Without Boundaries and a church where everybody is somebody. But before we hear the word of God, we want to make a proclamation holding our Bible in our right hand. And I say one, two, three, let us go. This, this is, is my, my Bible. Bible. I, I believe what it says about me. I'm about to receive the word of God. My life shall never be the same again. I shall be empowered. I shall be parted. I shall be polished. Holy Spirit, help me now to receive the word of God. Give God a mighty hand as we go straight to the word of God. As we remain standing, I want us to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 17. The book of Ephesians, that's the New Testament, the fourth chapter, and that is verse... 17 we begin from there in Jesus name hallelujah amen. Ephesians 4 17 mm -hmm. if you're there say amen. amen if you're not there say Holy Spirit help me hallelujah and I read This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the brightness in their heart who being past feeling have given themselves to the lewdness to work or uncleanness and greenness but you have not but you, you but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have earned him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you pulled off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new oh, hallelujah you put on what the new man which was clean created according to god in true righteousness and holiness therefore putting away lying let each one of you speak truth with neighbor, his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Praise be to God. Take up your seats in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I dedicate myself as your vessel. Use me to expound these scriptures, O God, your oracles. As I say, thus says the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen the title of my message is new life in christ new life in christ new life in a believer are we together church new life in a body of christ new life in believers new life for us as saints and christians and sons and daughters of god the Bible text here is letting us know that now since we have been renewed. Those who remember last two weeks I taught about what we are to put off. Today I want to preach about what we are going to put on. After you move the filthy garments and then what you have to put on. So I will be jumping to another scripture after some time to show you what we have to put on after we have removed the old garments that are, that, that, that are filthy. The old garments that are stained. The old garments that are of unrighteousness and we have put on a new body of Christ. Now that we have been transformed and renewed, now that we have already dealt with the whole person who was deceitful, who had lustful, precious, who had a sinful nature, we have abandoned him and now we have been transformed and renewed by the word of God. 
what brings renewal is the word of God. Our renewing process comes emanates from the word of God. The word, the infallible word, the word which is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is our food. Hallelujah. And as a believer, if you have no word, then you are empty. You need to nourish yourself in the word. You have to dip yourself in the word, excavate and understand the scriptures and understand understand the meaning of the word of God because this word is our guiding principle now that you have been renewed by the word of God we should no longer behave in the former lifestyle the lifestyle of futurity the lifestyle of uselessness and pointlessness we have to walk in a new lifestyle why? Because we have been renewed. Why? Because we have been grafted in another kingdom. We have been disconnected from the old nature. The old nature is dead with all its desires, with all its lust, with all that pieces the whole body that is gone. After we've been born again, now you ask me, Bishop, what are you talking about transformation? When you become a believer, a born again saint Christian of God, you leave the whole life of the Bible it says, Behold, the old is gone. And behold, everything has become new. That's the transformation process. You leave the old lifestyle. You leave what you used to desire, what you used to like, what you used to eat. It's like you get rid of the food that was not healthy in your system. Things that do not please God. Things that are unrighteous. You left them. Now you are a newborn. That's what the Bible says, newborn. A newborn child, an infant, will eat good food, well nourished and new with the nutrients. Food that will make that baby grow and become strong in stature. Amen. So now, as a believer, there is food of the spirit as a believer. When you become born again, you have to start eating the word. You have to start eating the good food with the nutrients that will help you grow and become a better person because you are coming from a holy nature but which has been renewed so that in the process you don't have to leave a vacuum you have to put something in place of what you have removed and this is what i'm bringing what you know you have to put in a new man because the old man which who was dead and who now is in christ is changed he has to eat different food different stuff praise be to god Amen. when we remove the old garments what are the old garments the old clothes full of filthiness and stench you understand what i mean filthiness there was we were stinking we were dead sin we were in sin sin wherever we go we were smelling sin do you pass a dead corpse even some of you walk on the road you find a dead uh, deer hit by a car several days after several days it decomposes and it starts to smell bad so that's how we used to smell that stench that you smell is how we used to smell in sin we, we were not smelling physically but in the spirit we were smelling filthy but now since we have removed those garments that were full of filthiness and full of sin we must wear new garments of holiness and righteousness Amen. for the bible says without holiness and purity no man shall see god if our desire as believers is to see god and dwell with god in the heaven we say live with god in his holy temple we must wear new garments because the old garments cannot enter into the presence of god therefore we must kill and we must crucify the old stuff that were foreigners that was a way of life we are adopted and it became part of us now we have to make a disconnect a disconnection praise the name of i want to talk to somebody this morning i'm talking about holiness how do we praise god yes. we will not praise god with the lip service yes. it is our deeds yes. our work yes. our testimony yes. we will not praise god because of how good we look how smart i may look i may look sharp i may look like i'm clean but he and me i may be feeling yes. that god is not the outward it's the inward yes. what praises god is what is inside your yes. heart what is your desire? What is that insight? Your attitude. Mm. Are we together? Yes. Your attitude must please God. Yes. If you have to be called a child of God, then you must be like him. Yes. But we cannot be like him without the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes. 
We cannot please God by our own nature because we are born in a sinful nature. Yes. But there is a helper. Amen. The Holy Spirit yes. is the one who tells us the way we should walk. Oh, yes. To please God, not our parents. Yes. Not our teachers. Mm -hmm. Who will teach you how? Even your parents cannot teach you how to walk in holiness. No. It is the word of God. Mm. The word of God. The food of the spirit. Yeah. Now, as a believer, you must desire to learn to study the word mm. to be approved of men. Yes. Mm. That if somebody brings a distorted doctrine, brings something which is out of context, you correct and say, no, the Bible says. Mm. We have to be Bible readers, Bible scholars who understand the interpretation of the Bible. Who understand the scriptures. Who study the word, not only talking about the word. You know what? We are so good on our gadgets, on cell phones. We talk a lot. But I see Christians are ashamed to talk about God. Most of you have Facebook followers, but there are things you don't even throw a scripture on Facebook and tell somebody about God a scripture. That you can frame it away, it can touch and bless somebody's life. We have been given a free media to preach, but we want only four our stories. We are there 24-7, but about things of God, we don't want to talk about God. We want to talk about the things of the world. We, we jump and we, we get happy and then we laugh and we kick, we can't go, and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to things of God, we silence the spirit. We don't expose what we know. You need to know, tell people the truth. That this word of God transforms life. This word of God changes yes. our attitude. Yes. I was somebody crude in the world. Mm. But when I came in contact with the yes. word of God, oh. the word of God transformed and it changed me those who were here on Sunday. Amen. I talked a little bit about my life. Who I was, I was a filthy man. A stinking man. A wasted man. A useless man. A vagabond. But when I came in contact with the one with Jesus, when I had that encounter, God transformed, I'm not going into details. He changed me and now he has made me a vessel Amen. that I can, he can use and I can minister to the people. Tell people God can change, yes. that transformation can happen in your life. Yes, God is not a respecter of a person. He can change you, he can change anybody. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, putting off the former conduct, as a believer, it's a must. Tell your neighbor it is a must to put off the old conduct. It is, it is a must. Now speak with like you like like you like it. It is a must to put off the old conduct. It's a must. It is of essence. It is mandatory that we must put off the former conduct, our former behavior, if we desire to live a life that pleases God. Why am I saying this? Because the former life is full of deceitfulness, mm. corruption, mm. lust of the flesh, and to many more, and many more others. others. Amen. The old man, the old person, is full of dirty stuff, full of filthy desires and lust. You look at something, you lust for it, you want it. But now, we want to please God. We must put a new garment. Mm. Amen. Oh, yes. A garment of holiness. Yes. A garment of righteousness. I'm yes. not talking Amen. of a new doctrine. Papisa. I'm talking of facts and real stuff. We as believers, I'm teaching the basics, fundamentals. I'm teaching the primary stuff that as a believer, you need to disconnect with the old. The old man is so bad. The old man will hinder you to see the glory of God. But if your desire is to see God, you must crucify the flesh. The flesh will last against the things of the flesh. We must allow the spirit of God to desire the things of Jesus God. And I'm not saying that you're going to go and live in heaven. We're going to live on this planet earth. But there are things we can say no. Let me ask you. When you go to the buffet, lunch or dinner, do you eat everything on that buffet table? No. What do you do? You choose that which you like, that which fits you, that which has the ingredients that you desire. You don't eat any food cooked in a hotel. When you go to the hotel, you ask them, give me what? A menu. Why do you get the menu? Why do you get the menu? It is to choose what suits you. There are some foods you will eat that will cause constipation. Mm -hmm. They will cause stomach upset. Yeah. They shall be poisonous to your body. 
Now in the spirit, there are things as a believer we don't all need to indulge ourselves in. Because they do what? They will corrupt. That will bring corruption to the spirit. And the spirit of God will disconnect. You know, when we touch the and all the stuff, it disconnects because he is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit does not bulldoze. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's a soft man. But if we disconnect with God, with him, he departs. And we are left just making noise, saying we are still Christians, but we are Christians who are spiritually dead. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to teach the full gospel. Mm -hmm. Put him off the old Godal canal. This, this scripture that I've read, the Ephesians, points to us as believers. We should strive to be freed from sin. We should work hard to get out of sin. To strive is to endeavor, to work hard. Walk a little further. For sins, the eternal penalty, because there is an eternal penalty, but this would depend if we have to be freed from sin, the eternal penalty. One thing is required of us, we must walk daily and quest for obedience. We quest for obedience, to walk in obedience pertaining to the word of God. Obedience is of essence. And purity that all believers are called for. We've been called to be holy. We are not holy, but we are born in a sinful nature. But now when we have been renewed and we have entered into Christ, now we are pure, we are holy, we, our sins are covered. Though the sinful nature is there, but it is covered. Come on, somebody. Why are you wearing clothes? Why are you wearing clothes? To cover your nakedness. Now, our sin is covered. The way now my nakedness is covered by these clothes, that is how when you get born again, what you did, which is in the lineage, in the, in the generation, is covered. Because you have made a confession. You have repented. You have denounced. The spiritual stuff is to denounce. is the mouth. The Bible says, and you shall confess with your mouth. And you shall be saved. So you are not going to be taken to a ritual service whereby the preacher will jump on your body and come with concussions, things and surround you and scream and say things. No, it is just a process of confession. You come to realization that you are a sinner and what is it? You confess, you say, I am sorry. Immediately you are disconnected. And then you are covered. The new garments come and cover your nakedness. When people see you, they see a different person. And that's what people ask, what happened to you? You no longer go to pub to drink. You no longer go to kaboom, 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 kaboom. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. No more discos. Praise be to God. I was a heavy disco. I used to dance. I was a disco. I used to do even a break dance. Those days, those who remember break dance. But now I no longer I break dance for God. I break dance for Jesus. Hallelujah. When you see me here holding the mic, I'm doing it for God. It's not to show myself. It is because now, what I used to do down there, I have to transfer it to the kingdom. Yes. It is required in the kingdom. There is worship and praise in the kingdom. Yes. Therefore, why? Because I have been born again. I have been changed. And once I have been changed and renewed, yes. my lifestyle changes. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm walking to the next thing. Oh, yeah. The character of a new believer. What you should put on. Mm -hmm. I want us to turn to the book of Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12. It's just behind Ephesians. I'll read like three lines and then I'm done. Then I'll demonstrate what we need to do. Colossians 3, 12. Hallelujah. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, tell your neighbor, put on, Put on. Tender masses. Tender masses. This is just a tender masses. Tender masses. Kindness. Kindness. Humility. 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 Meekness. Meekness. Long suffering. Long suffering. Forbearing with one another. Forbearing with one another. And forgiving one another. And forgiving one another. Now, if anyone has complained against another, even Christ forgave you, so also must do. Now, number 14. The last one you should put. But above all these things, put on 
love. Say love. love. Above all, after you have done the tender masses, the kindness, the humility, the meekness, the long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. You have finally you must put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Now I begin with number one, tender masses. What is tender masses? Tender masses. Soft, soft forgiveness, soft dealing with the people. Tender. You have man, you are merciful in a tender way. Tender is something that is soft. Something which is so that you can tear with the hands. Something that is not stiff. You have to be tender. Tender. You have to tender. Allow people tendery and merciful to people. Forgiving. Allowing others. Listening to others. Tender. Be tender. As a little kid is tender. This kid cannot at you. The children, they are so tender. We need to be like children. Tender hearted. Uh, let me use the right word. Tender hearted. Not stiff hearted. No stubborn. Put on tender masses. This is the new clothing we must wear. The new, I'm talking of the new garments after we have removed the old garments that I preached two Sundays ago. Yes. You put tender masses. Yes. You leave the old ones that you had. If we go back in verse 3 there, you will see what we read. Number 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on hand for the occasion and cleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is adultery. Because of these things, the land of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. We want to put away those things for the occasion, evil desires, covetousness, adultery, and cleanliness. Now, number one, we put a standard masses. Tender. Number two, we have to put on humility. And sometimes humility may be mistaken as weakness. When you meet a humble person, you think that person is weak. Humility is modest and low views of one's own importance. Humbleness. Act of humbleness. To be humble. That when you approach people, you are humble. You don't jump. You don't shout. You are humble. You present yourself in a humble manner. Lowly. Lowering yourself to their level. Even if you are a boss in the office. Don't shout at your workers. Don't bully them. Because they are people who bully. Be humble to them. Praise be to God. Christ being God, he comes in a humble stature. He humbles himself even to death and he has not made any, he has not committed any sin. He humbles so that he can deliver us. Let me tell you people of God, we can treat and we can deliver many people from their ways of life by our conduct, the way we conduct ourselves. The way we present ourselves, the way we approach them with humility. Humility as a believer is a must. Humility as a believer doesn't mean you are weak because sometimes somebody can insult you and you say praise God and thank you, God bless you. That does not mean that person is weak. Jesus said when someone slaps you this side, give the other side. But it doesn't mean you should wait for people to be beating you up. No, it is to forgive and let it go. Mm. Number three, meekness. What is meekness? Meekness is the condition of being meek, submissiveness. Being submissive, meek. You submit. I can call it somebody of low, but you respect others. You are meek. You lower yourself down. Number five, long suffering. We must wear long suffering. What is long suffering? This is bearing with one another, forbearing and patience. Mm. No, I, I forgot number numbers five, sorry. It's a s act of showing patience in spite of troubles. Act of showing patience, being patient. There are people who are so impatient and they cannot listen to you. There are people who are impatient. They want things done now, 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 and this minute. But there is a process. 
Long suffering is to be patient in spite whether things are not working. In spite of the condition you are in right now. Church, are we together? Amen. In spite of what you are going through, you are, you walk an extra mile. Long suffering, you endure endurance. You endure pain. Like a patient in a hospital. Yeah. The patient in a hospital, regardless of what sickness, they are patient and waiting for treatment. Sometimes the doctors will come to surgery, do injections, do clean the, the wounds, and they are painful, they are oozing blood, they will cut the body, but still the patient is developing a spirit of patience. That's why it's called a patient. Patient, patience. As believers, we need to be long-suffering. We need to be patient with the others. We need to be patient in whatever we do, in our walk of life, in our jobs. Number six, tolerance, which is forbearing. Forbearing is tolerance. Tolerance, we must tolerate one another. Yes. There are people who cannot tolerate one another. Mm -hmm. We must be tolerant. Forbearing with one another, we must restrain ourselves. There are people who are swift to act. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the conduct of a new man. I'm teaching, I'm not preaching today. I'm not exciting anybody. I'm just telling you what you need to put on after you move the whole garments of filthiness. Now you are putting new garments of holiness. You put on tolerance. Time to tolerate people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Tolerate. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You need to listen to others. You need yeah. to have a teachable spirit. Oh, yes. When you go to college, you listen to the professor. Uh -huh. Bishop is a student. I listen to my professor. Although I'm, I, I'm learning online, I'm given assignment on, and I must finish every subject and do whatever they ask me. They tell me write 60 pages of a, of a dissertation. I have to write. I have to cram it. I have to get it from my mind. I have to it and I do it. It is not really easy. I will not tell the director, no, I want to do 20 pages. I'll do 10 pages. That's what I'm able. I must tolerate. it. Even if I'm pushed to the, to, the, to, the, to the limit, I have to tolerate it. The assignment must be finished, must be accomplished. If we have to go to heaven and praise God, we must be tolerant. We must tolerate one another. Number seven, forgiveness. And this is where normally Christians are caught. Not forgiving. I will forgive, but I will not forget. That's not forgiveness. Hello? Amen. I will forgive, but I will not forget. You have not forgiven. <laughs> the real forgiveness is when the person who had you, you are able to go back and shake hands and say, I'm sorry. Okay. I forgive you. And I love you. Amen. If you desire to go to heaven, mm -hmm. you carry unforgiveness. The gate of heaven will not be open for you. Mm -hmm. No matter my titles, bishop, right level, left level, Archbishop, Pope, if you have not forgiven one another, there is no heaven for us. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is a must. Why? Christ Jesus came and demonstrated it here on earth. Yes. He forgave, he died for us sinners, which means, first of all, he forgave us. He took the nature of man and went to the cross to die because of our sin. For, now, if we cannot forgive one another, and Christ was, God came and died for you to be forgiven. Because we were disconnected from God. He comes to connect us back to God. Who are we not to forgive? Who are you not to forgive your brother, your sister, your colleague? I used to have that problem and I struggled with it. Sometimes I have to tell you the truth. I struggled with unforgiveness. Mostly even from members of my family. What they did for me. There are things that happened in my life. And I said, I'll walk out from home and I'll never return back again. But you know what? When I met Christ, he humbled me. Hallelujah. God humbled me. Let me tell you, I was, I mean, even fighting, I used to fight. I'm sorry. I, for you, for me, I used to be a bad fighter. But never anymore after I got born again. Amen. You could not challenge me. By the devil. I could not negotiate with you. I was here. But you see, when the old man died, oh, yes. come and slap me. Now just look at you and smile. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. God dealt with me and the same way he can deal with you forgive yes. 
Why carry bitterness? You know what I realized? Most of the sicknesses we Christians carry, it is as a result of unforgiveness, disappointments. Most of sickness, the heart problems, the blood pressures, and, the, and all that comes as a result of uppering bitterness, keeping bitterness in you. It eats you down like cancer. Some of us is not even hospital. We don't need conventional medicine. What we need is to let things go. Yeah. Let it go. Forget yeah. and let it go. Yeah. What does it cost you to forgive somebody? Yeah. What does it cost you? Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Do you want to get right? The person whom you are carrying is not even realizing what you are going through. Yeah. You are carrying yourself and the person, but the person whom you are carrying is free. Yeah. The problem is you. Yeah. You must deal with yourself. Yes. Deal with the baggage of unforgiveness. I'm talking yes. of the things, elementary teachings that need to be taught in the church for believers yes. to be free. Yes. It's not all the time to preach scriptures that people would jump and scream and say, Hallelujah, praise preacher, preach preacher. There is a time for basics. The elementary, like a baby. There are things we abandon. We want to be told God will bless us. God will bless us as we accomplish certain conditionalities. Mm. Yes. As we fulfill some requirements, there are some prerequisites mm. that we must accomplish before we move to the next level. Amen. Now, after we have forgiven one another, the Bible is saying we must put on the eighth garment you must put on. Love. Tell your neighbor, love. Love. Love which covers all the multitude of sins. Above all things. The board of perfection. Love is what brings us perfect. Perfection means perfect, complete, done. Amen. When we put on love, I'm talking agape, God kind of love. I'm not talking about the affectionate of man and a woman. I'm not talking of the love between me and my life or between a girlfriend and a boyfriend. I'm talking the love of God. The agape, God kind of love. But the world has distorted love is only meant for the affectionate. But it's, oh, we have affection to our God. But our affection is not on a physical part. It's not on a body. It is in the spiritual. Spiritual love. Agape. God kind of love. We must put on love. Love, even the unlovable. There are people I used to look like they are not creation of God before. But our God opened up to me. And even the beggars, the cripples you see, they, are, they need love. They are created in the image of God. We need to love them whether they are dirty whether they are clean yes. whether whatever they are disabled we must love them and honor them as vessels created by god Amen. you must love one another mm. don't look at somebody and say somebody is not beautiful is not handsome who told you yourself you're handsome mm. or you're beautiful yes. do you have a gauge that gauges and tells us the beauty the level of beautiness and the and the handsomeness no the Bible says everyone is created in the image of God and in the true likeness of God. And God said, oh, what I've created is beautiful. It is yes. good. Yes. Therefore, tell yourself, I'm good. I'm, I'm wonderfully created by God. I'm fearfully created by God. If you want to see a handsome man, look at me. If you want to see a, a beautiful woman, look at myself. There is no one else like you. Do you know you are the best yourself? Yes. Amen. No, I am. You are the best. Amen. You yourself. There is no other duplicate. No, come on. People are not listening to me. There is no other person like you. You are unique. Yes. You are beautiful. Amen. You are handsome. Yes. And sometimes you follow the opinion of people. He looks hungry. Who does he think he is? I know, I'm not your opinion. I am a child of God. Amen. I am created by God. Amen. I am a son and a daughter of God. Amen. Whether you don't like my features, they are created by God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The designer is yes. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey, somebody. Yes. Love. Love people. Even those you see that they are not lovable. Love, respect, and honor them. Mm. Widen up. Finally, allow the word of God to dwell in you richly and in all wisdom. Final thing, after you have covered yourself with love, then open your doors for the word. Allow the word. Allow the word to dwell richly. Allow the word to penetrate inside you. 
allow the word of God to guide you, to show you the way, the direction. To dwell richly is to dip yourself like you dip yourself in a swimming pool, to be submerged by the water. Let the word of God submerge you. Let the word of God cover you. So whatever comes out of you, whatever emanates from you, it is emanating from the word of God. What you speak is the wisdom and the knowledge of God. You know what? Teaching the right thing sometimes is very hard. People want to be cheated, but I'm don't teach teachings that were distorted, teachings to excite you that will not affect your life. I teach things that will change you, become who God desires you to be. I have to teach the true doctrine, not fake, not exaggerated. Amen. We have to put on, because what? The old man wants to dwell on the old stuff. That's not my lifestyle. I will teach the truth. And the truth that we teach shall set us free. Stand up on your feet. Before I wind up, somebody is asking me, Bishop, how can I change the whole garments and put on the new garments? Tonight, you can. It can happen. How do you do it? It is change the way of your life. Change your life style. Get out of the whole life come into the new lifestyle and how do you do this is through confessing your sins i preach this gospel for one common purpose to win souls the kingdom of god because if this gospel was not preached to me hi whom you see here could not have been saved and one preacher touched my heart that is 30 years ago that i entered into a church in the ranch hour meeting and the preacher was talking about transformation he was talking about it about time, turning away from the way you are leading and coming back to a different way. And I caught myself, I was on the opposite direction. Then I put my things right with God. You can put your things right with God. Amen. And this to be born again. Are you willing to give your life to Jesus? You are not giving your life to a church, not to a man of God. It is to God, to your creator. I'm just a vessel, I'm a servant. My work is to, to bring you to Christ, to come to the realization of how far you have gone, but to let you know you can come back and you can be restored back to God. If you're there and ready, repeat this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Today, I repent my sins. I come to you. I beg for forgiveness. I have lived a bad life, but I'm willing to change. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Change me. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Delete my name from the book of death. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I'm born again. And I become a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give praise to the Lord. And if you're there, and I'm going to pray a short prayer for you. What I want you to do, look for a church. A church where they teach things of God. A church that teaches holiness and purity. A church that will make you grow and connect with the man of God. And be submissive. Be submissive and be teachable. I want to bless you. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare the souls that are coming to your kingdom. Safeguard them, O oh God, uphold them, my Father. Ground them and rooted in your word, firm and stable, that the enemy will not be able to uproot them. I declare and I declare, Satan has no power over their lives. Their lives are in your hands, O oh God. That which you have begun, you shall bring it to accomplishment. Help these people to grow, to become disciples and to become ministers of the gospel. Lord, the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but laborers of you. These are vessels, the candidates who can be laborers in your kingdom. Use them for your glory. Empower them with your knowledge. Equip them with your power. In the name of Jesus, let them become great men and women of God. I thank you. I bless those who are watching me. I thank everybody watching this message wherever they are, all over the world. I God, I bless their lives. I declare and I declare and I prophesy a turnaround of their life, oh God. Those who are sick in the bodies, they're going to be healed by the mighty power of God. Those expecting a miracle, Lord, I decree a miracle in their lives. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, oh God. Pen 
penetrating there as we live and they're watching in their rooms, in the hotel rooms, and in every corner, oh God, I decree your presence in your life, so God, touch them, oh God, bless them, King of glory, bring them, let them serve you to the glory of your name. Bless them, church, oh God, our congregation, oh God, those who are listening to me, I decree peace of God and blessing in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Give God a mighty.